This is Joey from J&J Fantasy Flyers. And this is Jason, and we're helping you soar above the competition. Soar above the competition. Welcome to our Week 6 ranking show. A um, lot of bad news here around the NFL this year. You know, some good guys going down. Highly, you know, entertaining, marketable, marketable players. As in a J.J. Watt and a Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, I mean, it sucks for the NFL, you know, not, let alone fantasy, but... Oh, it hurts. Right, Especially in fantasy. Right, two of the top five most recognizable uh, players in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, definitely, you know, Beckham, he's a... He's got to kill your team. I know that when we were in the standard scoring league, I have um, Odell, and it's not looking good, especially when I took Amari Cooper with my second pick. So, Herbs. Whew, yeah, that's uh, that's a tough loss to come off of. Um, but I'll tell you what, stay tuned to this show. We're going to tell you maybe a couple guys that can you know, kind of ease, you can ease into your starting lineups and, and fill that void. I know a lot of, um, one guy that I'm targeting in a lot of leagues that I think is a buy low would be Terrell Pryor. Um, I know I'm trying to go after him in maybe a couple leagues and hopefully just catch him before the breakout, even though I'm not sure if that breakout's going to happen this year. I mean, we've given him enough time. Yeah, I mean, it may or may not. Uh, we saw a little bit last week, and hopefully that carries over into the rest of the year, you know, we get on the same page as Cousins. Absolutely, absolutely. Now the bye week's all done and, and over with. Hopefully they built that chemistry a little bit more. Um, but I want to kind of touch on something that, you know, we kind of talked about last week and after seeing another poor performance of him, Jay, what do we tell owners to do about Amari Cooper? I mean, is he? can you start him, or do no. you need to see something? No, you bench him, and you wait for him to break out. Uh, you maybe wait for him to have one or two good games. Yeah. At least one. I mean, I, I don't think you can play him. It, it's, it's, it sucks, but, I mean, like I was telling you really before the show, it's, uh, you know, he, he was literally... On uncharted territories coming in for his first two years as far as NFL history and the numbers and stats he was, he was putting up. I mean, he was, um, you know, a top pedigree draft pick coming into the NFL. He's done it the past two years. I mean, that this, that just doesn't disappear. Well, it's disappeared the past three weeks, it, I can tell you. That. It has. And, you know, he's had some very tough matchups as well as losing Derek Carr last week. So, but, I mean... You know, you know, Michael Crabtree is, is just, I mean, let's face it, let's be honest, has just looked like the better receiver. And what really hurts with Cooper, it m might not be the, the downswing in, in production that he's putting up right now. It's really the price that you had to pay to draft him, to get him. I mean, and let's say you, like me, if you took Beckham and Amari Cooper, I mean, whew, you're not looking you're not looking good. And, no, it hurts, and hopefully you hit on one of your later draft picks. Yeah, and if like, you're stuck in a situation, I mean, maybe you can buy, find someone that... Uh, still believes in Cooper. Yeah. And sell him. I mean, we're going to sell him low, but, you know. At, at this point, it's almost better to just wash your hands of the situation. And, I, I mean, I'll tell you right now, if you can offer maybe an Amari Cooper for Chris Hogan. I mean, Chris Hogan doesn't have the name value, but he's right there. He's in the top ten for wide receivers this year. and he's Yeah, he's having a really good year. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, he might find himself on the bench. And, you know, if you got that one league to where it's about the name, the Amari Cooper name, I mean, who knows, does does Cooper, you know, kind of come back and, um, you know, light it up the second half of the season and for the fantasy playoffs? I'd like to hope so, but, I mean, you really kind of need to test the waters before you jump in on this one. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Like I said, I mean, if you can get a Hogan or something for him and you're really hurting, I say go ahead and do it. I mean, otherwise, if you're staying afloat, maybe if you're 2-3, and 3-2, three, three and two, you're still doing okay, maybe just hold on a little longer and see what you can squeeze out of him. Maybe if you're really sick of him, let him have a big game because he's going to have a big game. Yeah, eventually. I, I would say that it, it's set to come. I want to say they came out and said Derek Hart's expected to play week six. I believe so, yeah. He's expected this week. So yeah. I mean, this could be a decent game for him. Maybe he blows up this week. Going up against the Chargers. I just, I just think that somewhere down the, the road they're going to say, let's get a Mark Cooper the ball. I mean, you don't pick a guy that early in the draft and, and just let him disappear. So, I mean, I both say that we think, you know, he's going to become more of who he was last year than opposed to continuing this trend. Yeah. And if you remember last year, I mean, he disappeared too at times. I mean, it yeah. wasn't this bad, but there were, you know, weeks where he disappeared, you know, a couple weeks in a row. So, I mean, that's kind of who he's been. It, uh, it's... He's a you know a boomer bust type of player. I mean, this year we were expecting 
more of that uh, consistency, consistency out of them with the big games and then with the higher floor. Yeah, I was kind of you know kind of looking at him maybe like uh, what a Julio Jones puts up every week. You know, maybe like a, you know eight catches, eighty yards, or something like that, and then he he busts out for a hundred yards and two touchdowns, and I kind of mm-hmm. I was thinking like a real safe floor. Uh, maybe kind of like a Keenan Allen type with a little bit more explosive ability. But, I mean, hey, you know, now it's to the point, I mean, it's three games in a row. Mm-hmm. It is, and it's tough. And, and I think I said it last week when we talked about him, not, not to make excuses for him because he's dropping the ball, he's not getting the targets because he's not getting open. But, I mean, Derek Carr has been hurt. He hasn't been playing the best the offensive line. He hasn't been given a lot of time. So there's other factors coming into play. I think they'll figure it out, put it together, and I think he'll still finish the year. I mean, it's probably a little late to finish in the top 12, but I think it's going to be a top 20 wide receiver coming into yeah, the season. Yeah, I think he's going to help you more. If, if The one thing that I can tell you with Mario Cooper, let's say he's not on your team and you're just watching the struggles. If you have a pos- like a position, or even if you have a Mario Cooper, if you have a position of strength, like, for example, um, we're going to get to Deshaun Watson in a moment. But let's say you got Aaron Rodgers and Deshaun Watson, or maybe Aaron Rodgers, Jared Goff, Alex Smith, somebody like that. If you have a position of, of strength, go ahead and go out and get a Mario Cooper now. You know, if yeah. they need a quarterback, go get that guy. I mean, his his price is at an all time low right now, and this is the time when you can go ahead and go out and you know get that Amari Cooper. If you're five and zero, four and one, yeah, sitting I mean, there, you know, you got a bench spot to kill. You got, you know, it, and 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 Amari Cooper to your bench, it, it isn't gonna hurt you. No, I mean, even if you know, let's say let's say you're stacked at wide receiver. And you just want that upside. I mean, Amari Cooper got drafted in the second, third round for a reason. I believe that's still there. And I, I just think it's a slow start. I think he has a big second half. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's definitely somebody that you want to, you know, hang on to. But, I mean, if somebody, I mean, I like I said, I think Terrell Pryor is getting ready to take off. Uh, Chris Hogan. I mean, a couple guys like that, that's, you know, a possibility. But uh, um, n- enough with the negative here because, you know, I know we could bring up Jay Ajayi and, how bad he's struggling in the Dolphins offense itself. You're probably not going to hear too many Dolphins on this show, I can tell you that much right now. No, yeah, there's um, a number of struggling guys we could talk about, but everyone knows who's struggling. Everyone knows who's really going up, blowing up. I think I think we're going to try to concentrate on a lot of guys on this show that just might put a lot of question marks about. Maybe they started bad, doing better. They started good, they're doing bad. I mean, I think that's really what we're going to shoot for on this show is trying Absolutely. to get some clarity on a few guys that... Might be a little murky. No, nope. and what I another thing that I can honestly say is, um, you know, if you have any questions about whether a guy's rosterable or not, hit us up on Facebook, J and J Fantasy Flyers, or on Twitter, um, our At YouTube Fantasy page. Flyers. Yeah, our YouTube page, um, our website. There's all kinds of ways to get in contact with us. Send us a message. We'll let you know. Every case is different. We're gonna ask you, you know, who do you got? Who do you want to get rid of them for? That's your best bet here when it comes to guys. Me and Jason, the way our strategy is, and I think we would both agree, is we like to kind of sit on guys. Like, Jay Ajayi, we're not going to cut. Mario Cooper, we're not going to cut. Terrell Pryor, we're not going to cut. You know, we took them there for a reason, and we're going to live and die with that. Yeah. I mean, there comes a point when you got to cut bait, but... Not, not this early. It's yeah. still early. It's still a small sample I mean, size. I don't, I don't have numbers in front of me, but I, I uh, was reading something the other day, and there were guys going into week five that were outside the top 70 in the position and finished in the top 15. I mean, Jay Jai was one of them because he didn't even get his first start until week four. Yeah. And he finished as a top, I think, with a six back or eight back. Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely... There's, I think Coop, Mario Cooper was another one that we were, we were talking about. I mean, there's there's other guys. I mean, there's five or six guys that were outside of the top 50 in their position and finished inside the top 15 after five weeks. Let's face it. If you could just sneak into the playoffs sure. and hopefully they that that's when they win it for you because it doesn't matter how you start. It's all about how you finish. Get hot at the right time um, and you'll roll through. And I'm, you know, to be honest with you, just in our standard league, I'm really banking on Mario Cooper pulling it through. I'm not going to ditch him yet. Um, but, you know, let, let's get into some guys that we're actually excited to talk about. And I'm going to start with my favorite <coughs> here um, because, you know, I've, I've watched him the past couple weeks and it's kind of skeptical and I kept saying, you know, how long is he going to do it? You know, he's a rookie, you know, this and that. But it's Deshaun Watson. I mean, you have to go out. If if Deshaun Watson is on your waiver wire, you need to put in a claim. You know, if anybody's looking to trade low on Deshaun Watson, go get him. J.J. Watt being out, I think that's going to put, you know, Houston in some games that, 
you know, a little bit more high scoring. I don't think that defense is as dominant as it was last year. And I think as, you know, we've seen against Kansas City, there's a lot of points to be had in garbage time. And Deshaun Watson, I mean, he's throwing it deep. He was made it a game there in the fourth quarter against, yeah. against Kansas City. and Absolutely. Um, I know I won a matchup, actually, in that standard league. I had Deshaun Watson in. He put up 48 points. I mean, come on. I, you know, I had Leonard Fournette as well. Um, they both had big weeks, and they carried, they carried my team. I had Mariota, he wasn't playing, he was hurt, and I just picked Watson up off the off the waiver wire. So. Yeah, he needs to be on in every league. And, I mean, potentially start it, depending on who you got. Absolutely. I agree. And now I'm going to jump over to Cam Newton <coughs> real quick. It, it, the question is, is, is Cam back? Is Cam Cam again? I think he is. And I'm, so do I. I mean, I don't think he's going to put up, you know, 300-plus yards and three touchdowns every week, but... It's good to see. He had seven attempts, rushing attempts last week, but he still had zero yards. You know, so it's good to see that he did everything. He put it on his shoulder, and he, you know, he put numbers up. He he went out there, and he did everything that was expected of him. I mean, it was almost a perfect outing. I think he was like 26 for 31 or 32. I mean, the the guy almost, he had pretty much a perfect game. You know, and he missed all preseason pretty much, so this you know, was his preseason. He was getting acclimated to the offense with new weapons, you know, how they were going to start doing things. And it was good to see that they gave him another quarterback draw at the, in the um, goal um, red zone. Yeah. So I think they're letting him be a little bit more of himself, um, which I don't think maybe they were doing beginning part of the season. Uh, I think they're trying to integrate himself, who he is as a, an athlete. I think they kind of figured it out. What they want as a quarterback, you know, and try to keep him safe at the same time. I mean, I love Cam. I think he's going to be great. I think he's going to be solid top seven quarterback the rest of the season. Absolutely. No, I agree. And to be honest with you, you know, the next guy that you're looking to talk about, he's actually kind of grown on me. And I think he could be a, a starter in the NFL. Maybe not with the Indianapolis Colts now. But going forward, um, and that's Jacoby Brissett. I know you like him a little bit more than it's I do. Brissett, I mean, he's he's been really flashy, man. He's, put, he's putting up decent numbers. I mean, besides the game where they play Seattle, he's averaging around 22 points a game, almost 23 points a game. His rapport with T.Y. Hilton is growing that's every game. Thing. You know, he's, he's got that nice deep ball, and he's just hitting Hilton. And he gives you that nice weekly baseline with his running ability. You know, um... This week specifically, they're playing the Titans, who was ranked 31st for fan in fantasy defenses, which, I mean, it's going to leave him wide open and put up some points. Monday night prime time, I mean, he very well could be auditioning for a starter job. You yeah, know, you know, and yeah, I mean, he's definitely a short-term play this year with luck uh, coming back to practice, and he, he still might be a couple weeks out, but he, he's not going to be there much longer as far as the starter. But I agree. I mean, he looked good last year when he started for New England. And he's looking... I mean, he's looking like a serviceable quarterback with a little more work, man. He could be a, he could be a starter in the league. And the guy, he's, he's a good athlete. Yeah, definitely I think somebody who should be rostered. <clears throat> and in pretty much all your leagues, maybe not in a 10-team, um, but pretty close to it, um, definitely as well. I'm going to go a little bit deeper. Um, well, not so much deeper, but I'm going to go with Jameis Winston going up against the Arizona Cardinals. I know the Cardinals have a pretty good defense um, as well. However, I don't think that Tampa Bay has – reach its potential offensively-wise. Um, I think Mike Evans has a big game uh, going up against Patrick Peterson. I just think this is the, the guy that can kind of beat him. They have a little bit more time to prepare. Um, and they really didn't. They kind of let let us down in against New England with that you know, you know secondary that's not that good. So I think this is a sneaky play for a lot of fantasy points this week. Um, I like everybody in this game. I like Palmer. I like Fitzgerald. I like Winston. I like Evans. I like Deshaun Jackson. I think this has a, you know, a shootout potential here. Um, as I watch Ka- uh, Kyle Rudolph get another catch here for you, um, I know you're close touchdown. in that league. Not a touchdown, close though. But uh, that's four. It was thirty nineteen. It was like seven yards. But they're they're inching away to help you with that W there. Um, but I think Jameis Winston, um, kind of, I think he puts up three touchdowns this week, and I think he's a uh, sneaky top ten play. Um, I'm not too worried about the matchup. Um, going forward here, and I think Mike Evans actually has a big game as well. Yeah, I mean, it's not a bad pick. I think the Cardinals' defense is more stout against the run than it's been. They got Patrick Peterson, but everywhere else, I think you can definitely pass on him. I just want to 
take a quick second because we forgot to mention the buys this week, which are Buffalo, Cincinnati, Dallas, and Seattle. So if you do happen to have any of those uh, players on those teams, get them out of your lineup. No Definitely. Good. Um, I don't know if you caught it this week, but in our regular league, we have one guy. We um, One of our, our regular leagues that we have here is a um, one running back league where you have the option to start a flex player um, as well. So it's quarterback, one running back, two wide receivers, and a flex. Um, there's one guy in our league who you know says that that's rookie ball and, yeah. and he's you know against it. He thinks it's too easy, this and that. Well, I haven't roasted him in the group thread yet. I'm waiting until he can end. But he started the Denver Broncos defense last week. The Denver Broncos. I saw that. I thought he was going to change him out last minute. He never did. He just, he was, man, I don't know what happened. I mean, come on. I think we're really starting to see, you know, maybe it's that rookie ball. Yeah, maybe he's a rookie. Yeah, that's what it's kind of looking like. So don't be a Tyler Hardigan. Um, <laughs> definitely, you know, get the, the right guys in your lineup. And don't give away free points. I mean, that's the one thing I can tell you. But I want to go back to the tough defense situation here. And what happened with the Rams, the top scoring offense in the league? They ran into Seattle. We knew it was going to be a tough match up there. Jared Goff kind of really didn't put up numbers that we were accustomed to this year. Um, do you think that was a bad game from Goff? Or do you think that's a microcosm of what's to come You know, here? Well, I, mean, I think it's a combination of a bad game, bad matchup, coming down to earth. You know, I mean, he was putting up you know, crazy numbers, as was Gurley. Which, you know, you can't put numbers up like that. I mean, it's not going to happen. Not in the NFL. And he just came back to earth. The whole Rams team did. Yeah. And, I mean, you're going to expect to see that. Now the Rams are probably going to turn around. They're going to have a few more decent games. They're not, they're gonna, I don't think they're that bad. I think this not, is going to be one of their worst offensive games of the yeah, year. Yeah, they're not going to average 30 some points a week, you know, but they're not going to be, you know, the offense of last year. I think they're somewhere in the middle, maybe 20, 25 points a week. I think Gurley's still a safe play, but Jared Goff, I mean, he's still finding the offense. He's still building as a quarterback and growing, and I think he's going to still be a solid play. Yeah, I think Todd Gurley's still top three back going on forward the rest of the year. Um, you know, I don't think their schedule is that difficult coming up. I do know they have some games, but Houston took a big hit with J.J. Watt, and Merciless is down um, as well. Yeah. Um, so I definitely think there's, you know, it's not going to be that bad. Um, if you could go out and get Gurley or go out and get Goff after this um this week, go ahead and do it. Now it's time to pull the trigger. Uh, they're not going to get any cheaper there for you. Um, now you got one more quarterback you'd like to talk about, kind of a little dark throw right here. This yeah, week, right? Uh, I mean, no, not really. It's just more actually of a uh, a fair warning for Ben Roethlisberger against the Chiefs this week. Did you hear what Jacksonville came out and said? Jacksonville's players said that he looked old and slow. I didn't hear that, no. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, part of my thing here is did you hear what Big Ben said. Yeah, how he might not have it anymore. He might, well, in this, within within 20 seconds, he got asked a question if um, if he ever, if doubt ever enters his mind, to which he said no. And then the next question was, you know, what was wrong? But then he follows that up with, maybe I just don't have it anymore, which to me sounds like doubt. Yeah. You know, the guy, I mean, he was considering retirement this off season. He hasn't really been that good. I mean, he has a couple of decent games. He just overall has not been that good, man. I mean, and that was like a prime, I mean, not a prime matchup against Jacksonville, but it was... Jacksonville's they're number one against the Pats. So. Yeah, and they're at home, and they usually match up proof when they're at home. Yeah, and, definitely. I mean, go, going to against Kansas City next week, I think it's going to be a tough matchup. I think you need to bench Ben unless you're in a, a dire situation where you need to start him. I find someone on your wave of wire, I mean... Do, is it just me, or does it seem like the Steelers are getting away from what they've done well for so long? I mean, let's get back to throwing the deep ball. Let's go back to, you know, dink and dunk with Le'Veon Bell down well, the field. And I think the problem is Martavis is still getting the targets. They're just not connected. Maybe it's because he was out a year. They don't have the rapport back yet, the timing. I mean, I'm not well, sure. Maybe Ben just doesn't have but, it. But I didn't get why they didn't ride Bell. I mean, against Jackson, well, the first against the defense, last against the run. Yeah. I mean, Bell had a good game, but I mean, they should just roll the whole game on yeah, his Yeah, I mean, well, five interceptions, I mean, that's tough. I mean, that put him in a hole. It is tough. Um, but speaking of Jacksonville, I mean, I got to talk about one of my, you know, fast-growing favorite players in the NFL. That's Leonard Fournette. Like Bortles? No, it's no, oh, no. Okay. Let, let's pump that. No. <laughs> <laughs> not even, not even going to give that a thought. Um, it's Leonard Fournette. I mean, the guy is tough, man. He's getting the volume. The, I think the only question with Leonard Fournette is, can he stay healthy? I mean, can he stay healthy throughout the season? He's getting a lot of work. But, I mean, 
you know, Jay, he's put up, you know, in you know the past weeks, 21.4, 14.1, 17, 24.5, 31.4. I mean, he said before the season started, and I just kind of thought it was him just kind of shooting off at the mouth, but he said the game slowed to him. He goes, he was expecting it to be a lot faster. That's not a good sign for opposing defenses. I mean, no. He's a no. thumper. and You actually had a pretty good stat here for me this morning, or, uh, yeah, this morning with Fournette. Oh. And yeah, I like that. It is actually it's kind of dumbfounding to believe that two hundred forty five pound guy could be clocked as the fastest player in the NFL carrying the ball this year. Yeah, on his ninety five yard run, it was a uh, twenty two miles an hour. Yeah, yeah, that is. And not to mention also, he has now scored a touchdown in every single game as a pro preseason and regular season. Yeah, and they're. They're giving him the ball inside the red zone. I mean, it's definitely good stuff to come up. They're um, doing exactly what they need to do and take the ball out of Blake Bortles' hands. Yeah, absolutely. And to be honest with you, I think that offense is clicking. Um, and that's how they're, you know, how Jacksonville's going to have to win it is feed for net, feed for net. Now, I do think, you know, eventually they are going to um, kind of try to get that, you know, try to end that. The, you know, four net just, you know, running and running and running and running. The, the so gotta, team's going to shut it down. I mean, they got to lighten his workload a little bit, especially as a rookie. I mean, he's going to hit that rookie wall. You're not used to playing that long of a season. Especially if they keep going at this rate, they're going to go into the playoffs. I mean, you know, you could be talking a you know, long season, and they don't want to wear him down. Yeah, so it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be good for their offense as a whole. So I, mean, I do think they need to take a little bit of workload off him. But I, I think he's going to continue to just do what he's been doing. And Absolutely. I mean, if you have Lennon for now, you're starting him. Uh, he makes he cracks the top three for me this week going up against the Rams. Rams are thirty second against the rush. Um, that, that's a no brainer. Did, um, did you see the play where he waved on? He, he waved Mitchell. On, yeah, he waved him on to come tackle him, man. And he just he just laid it on him. Yeah, that's just. And, and you saw it. Mitchell got up. He was pissed that he just got ran over, and he didn't like it too much. I like it though. We like it as fantasy oh, owners, that's for sure. It was it was good to watch. But uh, I'll tell you what, you kind of got an intriguing guy that you uh, brought to the meeting here this morning. Um, who do you want to talk about with your one? Kind of, he's kind of been, yeah, not that great. No, you? no, he's probably been hurting a lot of teams. It's Demarco Murray, and I mean, the the yardage hasn't really been there, but the usage has. I know early on in the season. A lot of talk came up about him or Derrick Henry. And, I mean, for the past two weeks, uh, Murray has out-touched Henry 14-4. to And then again, 7-0 to last week against Houston. Which that was his game flow got away from Houston. Blew him out. They played Miami this week. No, last week. Oh, the week before. The last week against Houston, it was game flow. It got out of their hands. He only got seven touches running the ball. And, I mean... I mean, I mean, Miami's defense is sneaky good against the run too. It is. I mean, they're actually it is. pretty, you know, pretty good. They have a good run defense. But they're going up against the Colts. So I mean, they're they're going to, and they're allowing 150 yards a game. Uh, I mean, I think Mariota comes back, and you can definitely tell that that offense was hurting without Mariota. Yeah, there. I mean, what, if Mariota's not in, what are you going to do? You're going to stack the box. Yeah, I mean, so Mariota's in. You got to respect the pass a little bit. You got to respect him as a runner. I think it opens the running game up a lot more for Murray. I, I think he's more of a volume play, but I think he gets in the end zone this week. He very well could. Yes, yeah, I mean I think he's he's you know he's gonna start getting some touchdowns. He's gonna start getting a little more yardage. I think he's gonna. He's I mean he's not nothing's changed for him. I mean he's still getting the touches. It'll all come together. You know the offense as a whole will start coming together. A little I think more. Tennessee's gonna start clicking. I really think they start taking off here soon, um, and I think they're gonna start running with it. Um, another guy. Who you predicted it last week? You said you know they might limit his workload, um, and they did. You know, it definitely looked like he was on a snap count, yeah. but um, he made the most of his opportunities. And I gotta, I'll take my hat off to you, Jay. I mean, they look good, or he looked good, and that was that was. I'll let, I'll let you say. It. It's uh the little muscle hamster. And it's exactly what he looked like, man. It's Doug Martin. He was out, man. It's just from the first time he touched the ball, he looked like the best player on the field. I mean, he was he was making people miss. He was running people over. He was quick and in and out of his cuts. He was he looked good, basically. I mean, he only got 13 carries for 74 yards and a touchdown. He pretty much disappeared at the end of the game. I noticed, uh, and like I said, I think that was more of a snap count. They didn't want to feed him too much. I mean, you know, you worry about injury, not playing, and then just overall fatigue. 
And I, I think this week going against a pretty decent Arizona run defense, he's just going to get fed the ball. I mean, Jaquiz Wiser, excuse me, Jaquiz Rogers. Just, I mean, you might as well drop him at this point because he yeah. barely. I mean, besides starting the game, he didn't see much work, and he's not going to see much work going forward. This is Doug Martin's game. It's his backfield. It's his team. You gotta respect the pass against the Bucks. It's gonna open up the running game for him, man. I, I'm so excited for Doug Martin going forward. I mean, I think he's a top five running back the rest of the year. He's one of my guys that I'm I'm riding everywhere. And I believe in the in the pre-draft special. You said that that's your one guy that you would like to have in every league. Um, him and Martavis Bryant. So it doesn't have to be one or two. Hey, fifty fifty. You that's know, five hundred in baseball. That's good. Exactly. Then put you in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> exactly. Maybe not so much fantasy, but. Uh, um, I got, I'll tell you what, I got another guy. Um, he's not going to be as ranked as high as Doug Martin. Uh, you know, he's not going to be in our top 20 rankings. But I think it's a guy that, going forward here, he's a, a must-add in every league. Uh, I think that's Wayne Gallman. Yeah. Um, Wayne Gallman looks like the best back in the Giants. Not like that saying much because they're all pretty bad. But he looked fast. I mean, he's got the pedigree. You know, he stood behind or next to Watson. Um, in the national championship game, and that he, I mean, is the best pass catcher on that team. Them losing Odell Beckham really hurts. Um, oh, they're zero five. Odell Beckham, Sterling Shepard, Brandon Marshall, Harris, Harris. I mean, every single receiver. Yeah. So I mean, I can see Gallman getting some work. I think they want to find out who's. I think now they're playing for next year. Uh, they're going to put in some guys to see what they have and going forward. Wouldn't it shock me either to see. The Giants bring back Victor Cruz. Well, I think yeah. it would be another sneaky pickup if you could get him before the trend. Um, I don't know if they're looking into it or anything like that, but I could definitely see the happening that matches there. Um, I mean, it's a smart move, bringing in somebody that already knows the system. You know, it's it's a lot easier to do that than it is to bring in somebody, some random person. But yeah. I, I would say Wayne Gallman and actually my next guy, Marlon Mack. Um, I think these are two guys that are must-ads in every league. I think they're going to be on the top of your waiver wire list um, to go out and get. And I just think I think Frank Gore is finally going to be surpassed on the depth chart. And I think it's going to be Marlon Mack. I mean, he looked good. He was averaging almost 10 yards a carry against San Francisco. I know it's a bad run defense, but he's fast. He's quick. He had that touchdown. I mean, Marlon Mack looked good. Um, he's going up against Tennessee this week. I think there's going to be some gravy there for him as well. Andrew Luck's coming back. I, I think they're going to slowly start to transition Frank Gore out of the offense. Um, the thing that kind of made me think of that is they were on the goal line, and Robert Turbin was in. It wasn't Frank Gore. Now, Frank Gore, there's nobody that wanted to score that touchdown against his old team more than Frank Gore. I mean, that's you know he was with the 49ers forever, and they just didn't put him in. So I think that there's a couple signs on Frank Gore that – we, you know, we're not catching up to, and I think Marlon Mack's going to, you know, slowly, you know, increase in there, and if you lost Beckham or, or you just need another guy to kind of, you know, give you a little bit of depth, depth I think Gallman and Mack are, are pretty good ads, um, and you got a pretty good one, too. Yeah, I agree, and just real quick on your point, I would probably pick up Mack and drop any Seattle Seahawk running back I have. I mean, they have one of the best matchups coming in this week and did not do anything with it. Yeah. I think that whole line is horrible. The whole situation. Luke Jokel's out now. That whole situation's a mess. Drop your Seattle running back, pick up Marlon Mack, Wayne Gullman, or Elijah McGuire, which is my guy playing against the Pats this week. We saw what Martin did against him last week. Uh, I mean, I don't really know if that uh, Patriots defense is fixed. I mean, Thursday night definitely has the uh, it's notorious for just bad offense and good, better defense because of the uh, the time you have to prep. I mean, I, would, I definitely want to see them in a full week prep, see how they do. Yeah, they're playing the Jets, which probably wouldn't be the best test to see how good they really are. But the Jets are 3-2, and two, and I'm pretty sure they're tied for first place in the division right now. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're not – that bad, as bad as you might think they are. Yeah, I mean, the, we, we both kind of thought, you know, we didn't think the Jets were going to go undefeated. I mean, no. they they had a little bit of talent on their roster. Um, the defense is definitely a lot better than I think most yeah. um, thought. The offense still really isn't there. Yeah. But, I mean, hey, I mean, they're putting it together. I mean, kudos, you know, to Josh McCown and, and the job that he's doing. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, yeah. And, you know, Something to watch is Powell's day-to-day right now. His injury, even if he is active, it could come into play in the game on Sunday, and McGuire could just be, I mean, I, 
Forte still out. I mean, McGuire could be the only back there <clears throat> getting touches, which could be huge for him. I mean, you saw last week how uh, explosive he can be. Absolutely. Oh, I thought that was Rudolph for a second. No, Sorry. I was like, well, who's a big, <laughs> big old white lineman? Yeah, white lineman. <laughs> I see the two and the six look like an eight. I was like, oh, that's not good for Jason's uh, fans thing. Uh, just a little bit of note on the game here. Thielen just got a pass for about eight yards. And Kyle Rudolph got a pass for about seven. Nice. Uh, so, hanging in there. He'll have to give us an update by the time the show's over. About four minutes left in the Monday night game. I need 40 points tonight between Kyle Rudolph and Adam Thielen, which I'm thinking right around 20 right now. It breaks down to two touchdowns, 13 receptions, 150 yards between the two. Rudolph just got to have a catch. I'd like to see a nice, I'd like to see him, someone just break one. You yeah, know, definitely. A nice 50 yard, 40 yard touchdown, man. That probably put me. It put me right there. Yeah, for sure, for but sure. Anyways, um, speaking of pass catchers, you know, we're going to jump right into, you know, our list here. And uh, I think it's crazy to say one of the best fantasy football games from wide receiver I've ever seen was uh, DeAndre Hopkins. He had four catches and three of them were touchdowns. I mean, he looks good. He is toe tapping in bounds. I mean, Hopkins is back. Let's just say, let's call it what it is. DeAndre Hopkins is back. You give him some of that and throw him the ball, you know. He's a he's talented guy. Yeah, I mean, he's back. He's a top five going forward the rest of the year. If you can, if you have Hopkins, keep him. Don't trade him for anything, especially not a Jahi and Marquez Bryant. But we'll get into that later. Um, uh, I know you just bought him basically last week, and you got to be absolutely ecstatic about that. I am. I, 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 Doug Martin came back, showed me he's back. So I sold a Jai for him and Martavis, and I was like, I'm just stocking up on talent. Yeah, I mean, Hopkins, like I said, I think he's going to finish the year top five, um, and he's going to get back to that form that we know and love. And, and I, I really see the Watson training, you know, continuing to run, and, and he just makes that offense so much better. I mean, he's crazy. Hopkins. Hopkins. I mean, Will know. Fuller, I mean, geez. Yeah, yeah I mean, everybody, it's, it, it's all in the back of Watson. I think even... When Houston, as a team, has a bad game, Fuller disappears. Watson might be doing good. Hopkins is still going to be having a good game. He's kind of like in that A.J. Green, Jordy Nelson, Julio Jones territory where it doesn't matter what the rest of the team does. He's still going to put up 6 for 70 or 5, you know, five for 80 or 67. He's still going to get you a good baseline, which that's still 12 points in the PPR league. No, Which, absolutely. I mean, that's it. You get those weeks with everybody, and if that's his baseline and his and his ceiling is 150 and two three touchdowns, and we'll take that too. Speaking about safe floors, that kind of brings up your guy. I mean, he is probably the you know when healthy the prototypical you know safe floor guy. Yeah, and it's a uh, Keenan Allen man, and he's been solid. He's a top ten receiver coming back this year. He looks like the old Keenan Allen. He's getting the targets. You know, I mean, he's 10 targets, 10 targets, 9 targets, 11 targets, 12 targets. He's, he's getting fed the ball. I mean, they're not really uh, translating into receptions. I mean, it looks like his catch rate is right around 50%, 50, 90, 55, 45, 33. So that's not what you like to see, especially from somebody that, I mean, I think he dropped two balls, actually. One was a touchdown this week, yeah. which is not like him at all. He's usually one of the most sure-handed uh, catchers in the NFL. Uh, but and I and what really actually made me want to talk about him is I I read something or I heard something somewhere about somebody mentioned to buy low on him, which I'm not sure if you can buy low on a top ten receiver, but I think you can buy low on Keenan Allen, Keenan Allen because he hasn't had that breakout game that anybody's had, really talking he's, about. He's he's a sneaky top ten. He's got that high floor, solid production. Nobody really knows that he's just putting up numbers. Yeah. I mean, one touchdown, and he's a top-10 receiver. I mean, that's the type of production he's giving you every week. And going into this week, why I really like him going against the Oakland Raiders, who has the 18th-ranked uh, defense against the pass, I think that it definitely is an opportunity for him and Phillip Rivers to have a decent game, giving up 226 yards. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just a little side note from the Monday night game, Trubisky just threw a pick inside the 30-yard line. Minnesota taking ball with two minutes and twenty seconds left. Inside uh, Chicago's 30? Yeah. Yep. Oh, boy. Yeah, they're right there. I mean, it was bad read from Trubisky. 
Um, Are this going to run the clock out and try to kick a field goal? Cause I don't think so. That's right. a, yeah, 17 17? 17 17. But there's a lot of time left to where I don't think, with the distance that they have, I don't think that they can just run the clock out. Try to put I think they're going to try and put it in the end zone. Kyle Rudolph's been getting targeted the most out of this game that I've seen. He's got six catches. Well, Keenum's Keen still in because Bradford got pulled out, right? Yep, Keenum's still in. Um, and it's actually it's surprising to see Rudolph get targets with Keenum in. Cause yeah, I mean, he's got six catches. Stephon Diggs only has four targets, one catch for four yards. So. And McKinnon just got blew up in the backfield. That hurts. Not looking good for Latavius Murray. Not sure what's going on with him, but he hasn't been in the game either. Um, but we're going to move on. Um, your second guy is probably on the hottest offense in the NFL right now. And he's getting a lot of looks. And he might finally be living up to that potential that he had broadcasted back when he got drafted. Um, big body guy. I mean, Devin Funch is looking pretty good. He is. I mean, like I said, big body. He's 6'5", 230 pounds. I mean, that's not the type of guy you expect to run down the field as fast as he can, and just making the, the plays and body control he has. You know, he's got uh, the past, what was he got, I think f- three touchdowns the past couple weeks. I mean, he's not getting huge yardage, but he's getting targets and receptions. I mean, really, the past three weeks, he's getting 10, 9, 8 targets, you know, with four, seven, seven receptions. The touchdowns are really helping him out, and it's really coming around when Cam Newton's uh, game is elevated the past couple weeks. Excuse me. And I told, I was texting you on Sunday watching football, and I was like, man, I should have been starting Funch just over a giant. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, he's just, he's been such a solid play. I mean, I don't know what to, honestly, I don't know what to expect going forward. I think he's probably going to be a top 24 to 30 wide receiver. He's not going to get those touchdowns every week, and you can see his yardage isn't crazy good. But if he can keep this up, he can give you a safe floor a 15 points a week in a PPR league as your wide receiver three or flex play, I mean, I don't see how you're not happy with that. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I mean, to be honest with you, I'm going to go with another higher upside guy, and that's Robbie Anderson. Uh, he really didn't do too much this week. Um, however, I think going forward, I think he is the number one target. Going up against the Patriots secondary that, you know, has potential for big plays, um, I think Robbie Anderson's going to have a pretty decent week. Um, and I kind of like that here going forward as well. Also, another guy that I... Really want to talk about by low. Um, I think he's a perfect candidate. That's Dante Moncrief. Uh, Andrew Luck comes back. Yeah. Moncrief is immediately the number one red zone target on that team. Uh, I still could, depending on Luck, I could see him ending the year with seven to ten touchdowns. Um, kind of like what I projected here going into the into the season. Uh, I think that's still possible. I don't think he's going to get great yardage. I mean, Brissett's really got a rapport with you know T. Y. Hilton right now. Um, but I think Moncrief still one of those guys. If you have uh, Odell Beckham. You know, or maybe even Devontae Parker hurt his ankle. And if Moncrief's out on, on waivers, I think you should go out and get him. Uh, I think he's one of the guys who could be sneaky uh, for you in the playoff in the playoff run. Um, and that's definitely you know, somebody that uh, um, I don't know if he has the, the breakout game this week, but I think it's coming. But I think I'm going to wait till Andrew Luck gets there before I Yeah, I, I agree. Go pick him up, stash him on your bench, especially if you're a contender. By the time Luck comes back, I mean, if you can get him for. I mean, really just a depth piece. Maybe somebody that's certain. I was expecting Minecraft to perform better. You can throw him a, you know, a, a Crowell or something like that. You know, go grab him. Or even maybe a Devin Funches, somebody that's kind of breaking up now. I think Minecraft still finishes higher than Funches. Maybe not this week, but, you know, it's kind of one of those guys you trade somebody. And you you can sell high. And, yeah, yeah, sell and, high, buy low, get yep. your guy, and then definitely we could plug him in when luck gets back, you know, he could definitely give you a push to the playoffs to help you win. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot real, um, real quick. I'm going to I'm putting you on the spot, the hot seat. Um, your third wide receiver that you want to talk about. I know it's some guy that you've kind of been standing on the table for this year. Um, hasn't played yet. Would you start Willie Snead over Amari Cooper this week? Funny you ask, because <laughs> I am. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. It, it, in our dynasty league? Yes. And I got I have Willis Sneed in, I, I got a few shares, I think three or four leagues. I'm in, what, five? Five leagues, and I think I have him in three. And I am starting him in one. Maybe two, I'll see how it works out. Either way, he was supposed to start, he was supposed to come back two weeks ago, because they were on by this week. He was supposed to come back two weeks last week. And his hamstring, so they, they scratched him, gave him another week of rest, plus the bye, put him in this week. 
I mean, just nobody has stepped up and taken control of the number two wide receiver position there. And Dead Ginn's been pretty non. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's got his moments, but nothing consistent. And I think it's hurting Michael Thomas. I mean, you can see Michael Thomas's production this year not being what it was last year. And I think it has a lot to do with not having a consistent number, number two receiver. I mean, they had Cooks there that everyone respected taking the top off. And it just left Michael Thomas wide open. It, I think Willie Sneed comes back. The whole offense is gonna just open up. Drew Brees is gonna he's gonna you know find Sneed. Thomas is gonna start performing. Then you know they're gonna start cheating. You're gonna keep cheating Thomas away because right now he's getting doubled, and you know you get safety over the top or whatever the case may be. Yeah. And, so I mean, the fact that you're starting Willie Sneed over Mario Cooper does that say more about you know Sneed's upside or the just the downfall that Cooper has had? I think it's both because I believe Sneed is a top 18 receiver probably from here forward. I In think PPR? So. Yes. Standard? I, I mean, at standard, he might be higher because I think he's more of a standard play than a PPR play. See, I got him as more of a PPR play. I think he catches more passes than he does, you know, red zone opportunities. Um, but, no, I mean, I definitely understand where you come from. You know, I like Willie Sneed, too. It'd be nice to see him get back on the field and see what's going on. Um, just a little side note here. Jerk McKinnon looks like the guy to own him in Minnesota. I mean, he's... Is Murray hurt or... I'm not sure. We'll have to look into that a little bit deeper, but... Well, I mean, I mean he didn't look good last week when he did get the limited action. And I, I think that I heard the news that maybe he's still recovering. I mean, McKinnon's got six catches, 51 injury. yards. And he's got 89 yards rushing with a touchdown. He'll take that any any day from any guy. And, I mean, they just keep feeding him the ball here. It's not looking good here for your touchdown expectation. Really? Um, we got down at distance and where we at? Uh, you're looking at uh, just under a minute, and it's third down. Uh, Chicago just burned their last time out, so basically I, I think they're going to just run the clock down. I think they're going to take a knee kick the field goal. Um, now they're showing the fact that four bats missed. Um, so it's not looking pretty good, though, um, to see. You know, I could really use another Rudolph or Thielen touchdown. Yeah, you're, you're close. Speaking of tight end um, and Kyle Rudolph, I want to talk about one of my favorite players in fantasy football now. And it kind of scares me this week he's going up against New England. That's Austin Safarian Jenkins. I mean, I think he's a number one target there. Now, if we know anything that Bill, uh, Bill Belichick likes to do, that's to take away the um, number one target for a team. They're going to find a piece, they're going to take it away. However, I don't think ASJ is that head and shoulders above the competition, so to speak. Um, so I think that you know they're just going to kind of play normal defense and, and do whatever. Um, but I mean, I could definitely see you know Austin Safari and Jenkins finishing in the top ten of tight ends this year, just based on volume. I mean, I could see six catches, forty yards, and a touchdown. Even six catches for forty yards from a guy like uh, Austin Safari and Jenkins. I mean, you would take that all day long. Yeah, I mean, he's the best pass catcher in that offense. Absolutely. I mean, he's going to get his targets and he's going to get his catches. It, we talked about him, you know, preseason coming in in our draft special that he. You know, he's taking the right steps to become a, a better player in the NFL. He messed up in the beginning of his career, and now, unfortunately, he's in a horrible situation compared to where he was, but he's going to make the best of it. I think it's perfect for him. He's going to, you know, kind of grow, and, and, you know, I think he's going to take a lot of targets, a lot of catches. Perfect for fantasy owners. If he's still out on the waiver wires, go get him. Um, yeah, you know, I, yeah. I just dropped Antonio Gates to get him in my regular league. And it's, it's crappy as the tight end has been. I mean, you can't count on anybody. A lot of injuries there, too. I mean, so Ertz, Kelsey, and Gronk. I mean, Gronk was the last-minute scratch, so you can't count on him, really, at this point, either. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a crapshoot, and I, I agree. I think he's a definitely good pickup. Top ten. Plug and play. Yeah, I like Absolutely. No, I agree. And uh, kind of like your guy here this week, too. Yeah, uh, my first one is uh, Martellus Bennett. And the thing about Bennett, man, so much potential. Yeah. And he's getting, beginning of the year, I, I remember watching the games, and you could see Bennett getting the targets in uh, um, vital situations, you know, just dropping. I mean, he dropped <coughs> passes. He dropped a couple of them one game. He dropped a couple in the next game. And you could see the frustration on Aaron Rodgers' face. And I, I think, and then you saw last week where Rodgers is still going to him in those situations, and now he's making those catches. And now, I mean, he's showing his big playability in the run after catch that the things he can do as a ball runner, man, is just, he, and he's, he's 
putting up the you know the numbers you like to see from a tight end. He's, I think he's a low end number one tight end, but he's got you know the upside. If he gets a touchdown, he can get a touchdown or two any given week with Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, absolutely. No, I could definitely see that as well. I, don't I think it's a solid play. If he's not owned, he needs to be owned, and I, he's one of probably, he's not going to win you weeks, but he's going to be one of the most consistent tight ends. He's going to get you, you know, three to six receptions for 50 to 70 yards. So, I mean, you're walking away with an eight to 10, you know, 12, 13 points a week. Yeah, absolutely. No, I definitely uh, uh, agree with you there as well. Um, and I think he's, you know, one of them guys to where you can, uh, you know, stash. I mean, still, I mean, it's yeah. right there. I mean, buy low. Um, you know, here going forward, I mean, uh, you know, they're only, they're, they're an injury away um, on the wide receiver core. I mean, we've seen it before. You know, they haven't been the most healthiest. Um, and I think his role is going to get up a little bit higher. But uh, um, one guy, I'm excited to say, caught his first touchdown here. Um, this guy that we've been kind of big on, he's been making our sleeper list, and that's mm-hmm. George Kittle. Yeah. Um, you know, I know you had said that you had heard maybe um, from a couple different sources that, you know, Kittle's one of those guys that, you know, get now, get him on your lineups now. And uh, mm-hmm. there's just one guy that I really want to talk about and really kind of stress the fact of, hey, get him on your lineup right now. Yeah, and just to expand a little bit, I listen to a lot of my own podcasts. It's kind of why we started our podcast. I've been, you know, harping on you now for a couple of years, I've been talking about it. And I still listen to those podcasts. You know, and, the, you know, a lot of the thing in the fantasy community right now is George Kittle looks like he's going to, you know, develop into the real deal. And a week over week, his production is, you know, growing. It's doing the things you like to see in his production as a fantasy player. And it's only going to get better. Absolutely. And you need to, like you said, it's one of those things. You, you beat the trend, you pick him up, you put get him on the bench. Early. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's... He's, like you said, in such a crap shoot position as a tight end. You know, you grab him and get him on him while you can. And then speaking of the pretty much the same type of situation as Ryan, Ryan Griffin, the Texans. I like him. I think he's a sneaky play, especially with the resurgence of Watson. He is. And that's the thing, man. I mean, he's he's liable to put up two touchdowns pretty much with Watson in any game. And going against the Browns this week, the Browns have the worst defense against the tight end going back to the beginning of last year. I mean, it's just, the Browns have just consistently been bad against the tight end. I don't know why, I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's just something they do. And the high scoring offense and Watson, I mean, he's, he's still going to, I think he's still going to give you safe baseline. I think he's going to give you four catches, maybe 40, 50, 60 yards. And, and then if he gets a touchdown or if he breaks one open, you know, he can wind up with 100 yards. And that's definitely a good ceiling as a tight end with a safe floor. I think he's a good pickup. Play him this week. I think you're safe starting him this week. Rest of the year, maybe you play the matchups. If you have another tight end, you kind of streaming him. You know, I, I think he's a good a good stash and a play. Absolutely, no. I definitely agree with you there on that one. Uh, and uh, we're gonna get over to our defenses and our streams of the week. Um, to be honest with you, I had picked the, the San Diego Chargers going up against Oakland Raiders. Don't tell me you changed it. Uh, not changing it, but what I'm saying is is let's temper expectations. If E.J. Manuel is the starter for Oakland, yes. then roll with the Chargers. Um, if not, um, I got a good point. couple sneaky plays this week. Uh, I think the Denver Broncos are head and shoulders, the number one defense. Going yeah, against it, the Odell Beckham Lewis Giants. anybody dropped them because of their bye last week, which happens a lot, I, I usually do it unless it's a top defense sometimes, but get on that waiver wire and look for the Denver Broncos because that is the matchup to be had this week. Yep. I also, I mean, uh, I like the Detroit Lions. They are playing against the Saints. That's somebody that might not be playing that much, um, you know, defensive-wise. And also, I really like the L.A. Rams. I think they kind of showed something against Seattle. Uh, they're playing Jacksonville. I still don't believe in Blake Bortles. I think they're going to key in more on the run game. Um, I don't know um, if that's really, you know, something that I would, you know, really jump on the table for and say number one, number one, number one. But I like the Rams. I think they're sneaky, especially for the rest of the year. What I liked about them against the Rams, or against the Seahawks was they were they were pretty bad against the defense or against the run. But now Eric Donald back. I think they got another linebacker back now, and now maybe it's given a couple weeks to mesh together. And I think. That that pass rush and that run stop and D 
is coming back to where it was expected to be come the start of the season. Absolutely. And it could definitely be a tough matchup because if the Jacksonville Jaguars are forced to pass the ball, well, we know how Blake Bortles does with that. Yeah, absolutely. No, I agree. I agree. And uh, you got a pretty uh, gutsy pick, I would say, this week. It is gutsy, but I mean, it's, if you really look at their games, man, the, the Chicago Bears, they have a bend but don't break defense. Uh, I mean, they're they're pretty stout. I mean, decent against the pass. The, I think they're more susceptible against the run. Uh, but, I mean, they're played against the Ravens, who really don't have an offense at all. Uh, I mean, they held Bell to 61 yards a couple weeks ago. Uh, it, like, they've done good as long as points allowed. You know, they haven't really allowed a, a ton of points. And really what they're missing are the turnovers and the sacks. And going against the Ravens, I think... Think the opportunity for those are going to be there. They just they just need to make the plays, and if they can get a turnover, maybe a couple sacks, I think they'll be a solid play. They're definitely on your waiver wire. So if you got one of these teams on a bye this week, especially like Buffalo, then I you know Buffalo is definitely a good one that you probably have. Or Seattle on buys, go pick the Bears up and plug them in this week. Just actually was checking our Facebook pages. You were going over your defense because you kind of put me to sleep on that one. Um, we actually got a message. Thanks. And the message is, what do we do with Amari Cooper? <laughs> Tell him to watch our show. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to I'm gonna type in I back here real quick <laughs> and say, hey, stay tuned. You'll definitely see it here um, coming forward. But I, I, I mean, week six, I mean, there's... Now's the time to kind of go out and make your move for, get ready for the playoffs. Uh, you know, if you started 4-0, 5-0, chances are you don't have Cooper on your team. Um, and I, I think that plays into it. And I think, I think you've got to ask more questions to this person to see where they stand and what their roster construction is. And, and I think a lot of that has, it, it's contingent on what that is. I mean, if you're... If you're one and four or zero oh and five, and well, you you're in our standard league. You kind of got bit by the bugs, you know, quote unquote, and you actually traded away Julio Jones to I get did. you know maybe a little bit of a better shot here going forward because you had to shake it up. I did, you know, I was zero oh and four going into this week. You know, Julio Jones is on a bye. I'm hurting. I mean, I'm choosing between Jeremy Macklin or Terrell Pryor or Isaiah Crowell in my flex, which neither one has done anything for me. So I traded Julio for Doug Martin, who was like I've been preaching about. You know, I practice what I preach. And uh, Brendan Cooks, who I haven't been really high on, but I was expecting a big week against the Buccaneers, and I think is going to give you those good standard scoring production weeks. Kind of a two-for-one deal there for you as well. And now I can even out my flex position. You know, i got a solid flex play. i got two solid receivers between Randall Cobb and Brendan Cooks now. I think overall as a team, I'm better. I might not be as great with my... uh, Weak winning. You, you ain't got you, your trade away stuff, but like you said, you were kind of weak. You know, Johnny really hurt you. Then. He's been hurting me. Yes. And the fact that you could get two, you know, plug in your lineup every week guys yes. for one stud. I mean, that's almost a, when you're on for that's the deal that you have to make. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and don't be scared to, to make that move. Yeah. Especially you know, with the guys on the bye, man. I needed a win this week, and I was not going to win with Julio Jones on the bye. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I think another guy, you know, that's another thing, bye weeks. You know, if you're going to trade for a guy, trade for the guy before his buy. The you know, his, for example, Cincinnati's right now. If you, if you go out and get Joe Mixon, I mean, I know we've been, you know, he's just, man, we're just waiting for that breakout game, which might never come. But now's the week to, you know, yeah. somebody's looking in their lineup there. They see their starting lineup and they forget about Mixon. He's down in the bench and you're like, hey, man, I'll throw you Mixon. They're kind of looking at it. They're going to be more inclined to take that deal now mm-hmm. opposed to, you know, when Mixon just came, you know, comes yeah, back and, and playing. And going forward every week, look who's on buy. And if you're in a good position to make a trade, make an offer for somebody that's on a buy. Because especially if you target players that are in the bottom half of um, records, you know, they're in the bottom of the, fucking, the, the, bottom of the league, and, and they need a win, Make him an offer. You know, Absolutely. I mean, sh- sh- get a guy that could, you know, help you win your, your league, man. It's there. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're sitting there 4-0, and 5-0, and yeah. or 4-1, and or anything like that, go out and get, you know, maybe that Amari Cooper, that JJ, buy low on him, you know, give up a, you know, middle of the tier guy, maybe mm-hmm. like a, um, you know, maybe a Joe Mixon, you know, somebody that's got a high upside that, you know, everybody's kind of liking. If you can kind of go ahead and make that move, and maybe just get that one piece that might put you over the edge. 
And if it doesn't hurt you, I mean, definitely go about it. And I uh, just want to touch on real quick with trades. The best way to trade is don't lowball somebody. I mean, if you know they're not going to do it, don't offer it. Yeah. It's all if about you, knowing. If you wouldn't do the deal, don't offer. I mean, I, I agree. Yeah, you don't. It depends. Don't it's give not, them your best offer first. Yes. But know but the person you're trading with because some people, some people, they won't even con conversate with it if you don't give them a good offer. And, I mean, but I never go in with my best offer. And, you know, you, you're trying to word it out right, you know, just kind of thinking out loud here, whatever it is. And a, a good uh, tactic that I like to use maybe is you, you start somewhere else, but you end up somewhere else. You know? Exactly. And you end up targeting the guy you really want, you know, and you work your way to that through the talks. And it, I'll tell you one thing, just, you know, in my background with my, you know, professional career, um, being in sales and, and things like that, I can tell you the one thing that they, they taught us is is don't show all your cards at once. Mm -hmm. And the best thing, like you touched on it, you know, when it comes to a trade to where, you know, I, I'm, I really want a guy, um, I don't go right for that guy because you don't want to make the asking price sound, you know, way, you know, way too high or anything like that. You don't want to bid against yourself. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do is I like to come in real low for a guy that I don't want, knowing that I mm -hmm. can't get him. And then, you know, may, then I'll, I'll work on that transition statement to get to the guy that I really do want. And then I might offer a better piece well, yeah, and then you catch them off guard, like, oh, you're going to be like, wait, wait, wait. Yeah? yeah, they're like, wait, wait, wait. Like, you'll give me, like, for example, in the off season, um, I was really looking to go after Pierre Garçon. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought he was going to have a good PPR. And, uh, um, and this is our dynasty, so it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But I went in hard for Randall Cobb. No, I didn't want Randall Cobb. So if he would have said yes, I would have had to back out of that somehow. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I knew the guy that, you know, we've been playing with him for years. Um, so I kind of knew what he wanted and what he didn't want. And I backed out, backed out, and, you know, Went real low, real low, real low, and I kept, you know, poking at Randall Cobb and, and this and that. And I had a deal on the table for Randall Cobb that he would have done, which I probably would have done too, but I really wanted Garcon. I acted like it was too much. I said, oh, I wonder if we move to Garcon. Is he a little bit cheaper? And he goes, yeah. He goes, what do you look? He goes, but I won't do it for that guy. I was like, okay, well, what about this guy? And I got to the point to where he pretty much was ready to take the deal, and then something happened to where I was like, you know what, I think I'm going to take it elsewhere and go in a different direction. But uh, it's just a sneaky strategy that you could pull. I mean, if you think about it, that's all this is. It's, it's a sales job. I mean, it's it you is. have to sell your own talent. But the one thing that I'll tell you, don't try to sell a guy on a trade. You know, he, if he's going to want to do it, he's going to do it. Don't sit there and push like, Oh, come on, man. You know, this will make your yeah. team better. You can't tell somebody else what's better for their team. You know, they either like it or they don't. But you really need to know the guy. That's going to be your the most successful tip that we could give yeah. you. I mean, if you know your league, man, you can, you can try to sell, you know, guys – that are fans of certain guys' teams. I mean, I stay away from Dolphins. I know he, uh, Joey likes to, but there's some people that like to buy their teams. Yeah. And I, one of my favorite moves is a two for one when you trade two to upgrade into one better piece. Or um, vice versa. It's I mean, hard to do sometimes. Uh, but one of my most important things I do is when I do trade, I always, always try to get that extra depth piece as an add on at the end. It's you know you go back and forth and it's like oh man yeah I want to do this we're so close but you know tossing this guy and it's a deal you know that extra depth piece it's it's, it's a flyer it went to turn, turn out to be a drop in two weeks but it's a guy that you want and you get him on your roster and who knows what might happen exactly once you have him nobody can take him from you exactly um, and that's one thing that you know we both like to really kind of stress and and go forward here is know your league and another thing that I can tell you just. Um, you know, we're in a dynasty league. We got 10 guys in our dynasty league all together. And, you know, we play in other leagues with them as well. Yeah. So another thing to kind of be, you know, cognizant of is see who they got in other leagues. See who they're targeting. See who they had years past that they might have a little bit of a rapport with. It's going to be easier to move them, guys. And, and to be honest with you, um, there's a lot of controversy in our dynasty league over, like, trades and, and this or that. And I'll tell you the number one thing that I do is I really look to see who – you know, gets drafted in regular leagues and, and redraft leagues and this and that and who guys are picking up and, and this and that. And that really, I do all my homework in season mm -hmm. and I prepare myself for the dynasty next year. Say, okay, hey, you know, so-and-so had this guy. You know, he might like him a little bit more. So that's kind of our, our you know, guide on trading. Um, you know, let us know. If you got any questions about trades that you were offered, we'd be more than happy to go over them here with you. Give them, or, you know, give you our professional opinion as well. Um, but, I mean, hey, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And if it is broke, well, it's time to fix it. Yeah. So...
I mean, don't be afraid to make a move. And I mean, sometimes you just gotta live and die with your team, but sometimes you gotta you so gotta jump ship. I mean, just real quick, I touched last year, man. I started on four, I think one in five, in the league, and I wound up making the playoffs. I lost in the semis, but when I was one in five, I made three moves, man. I sold pretty much the core of my team. And, I mean, it was obviously the right moves. I don't know if I actually won those trades or not. I didn't, you know, see where they ended up come the end of the year. All I know is my team turned it around. I snuck into the playoffs. I made it to the semis. You're not out until you're out. Exactly. Don't I mean, give up on your season until you're mathematically out of it. And just just another example. I mean, there was a guy in our, our redraft league last year who started the year 5-0. He was 5-0. He was joking. He's like, oh, I'm already in the playoffs. And rightfully, he should have been. But he fell asleep on his team. He goes, oh, my team's, you know, this and that, this and that, this and that. He's good, he's good, he's good, he's yeah, good, he's good. the same league, I snuck into the playoffs ahead of him. And yeah. I started one and five. So. Yep. And, uh, I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, he just, he didn't do his homework. He didn't, you know, keep up on his team. He was just <clears> living <throat> off the fact that, you know, he was 5-0, and oh, he was 5-0, and oh, he was 5-0. and oh, And then he ended up, like, 5-7 and seven or whatever the record came to be. And he missed the playoffs. I mean, it's, you definitely got to stay on it. And, you know, keep that, keep the throttle down. You know, that's one thing at, at J&J Fantasy Flyers that, you know, we'd like to tell you is, is you know put your foot on the throat <laughs> you know it. don't let them up but uh once again my name is joey from jnj fantasy flyers and i'm jason we're helping you soar above the competition don't forget hit us up on twitter at fantasy flyers and on facebook jnj fantasy flyers and best of luck to you on your week six matchups good luck see ya